Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are live from Rockstar HQ and, oh, let's get this right, Productivity <laughs> HQ and it's day three of the holidays and everybody is still alive. So that's really good, really good. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been planning um, this little interview um, for a little while and I have put myself forward to be interviewed because I come on here and I interview lots of different um, rock stars for Rockstar TV and I was told that it was about time that I was put in the spotlight. So the lovely Sarah is going to interview me. Hi Sarah. Hello my darling. I am looking forward to this. This is so fun. <laughs> Huh? So I haven't um, looked at any of the questions. I said to you yesterday, didn't I, when you said I'm about to put uh, the questions over to you, I said I actually don't want to see them because I don't want to rehearse them. So these are questions that have been um, put in by some lovely rock stars. And I haven't rehearsed them. I haven't looked at them. Sarah's got them all. And Sarah's also been practising her interview advice. <laughs> I'm sure that with anyone, Sarah. <laughs> are you ready for this? So I might watch the odd box in match, and that's where this is come from. So I've got, and now it's time for our interview with Emma Holmes. <laughs> there we go. I love it, I love it, I love it. So who's around? Come on in and say hi if you're around and if you're watching us. So we've got um, some numbers ticking away up the top corner there. Hi, Janet. Morning. So yeah, actually, I do, I do feel a little bit nervous this morning. Um, because usually, I mean, clenched was the word you used yeah. earlier. <laughs> because it's not normally about me, and I know that I encourage everybody to talk about themselves and to let their crowd connect with them, and and we often do this in a very measured way, I think. And you know, I, I'll decide when I'm going to come on and chat to you about me and about my story. And this feels a little bit more um, outside of my control. <laughs> it's gonna be fab gonna be brilliant promise i'm ready i'm ready so i'm gonna hand over to you um so suzanne says hello no idea what this is about this morning but here i am we're interviewing me um i have put myself forward suzanne to be interviewed on rockstar tv i'm usually um the one posing the questions and i was told that it was about time that i took them on the chin and was questioned myself so that is what we're here for today I'm going for it. Excellent. So let's get started. Shall we do it? Go on then. Brilliant. So I have had loads of questions through, absolutely brilliant questions as well. And I've kind of grouped them together, together into like different categories and things so oh, we can kind of run through. So, well, you know me, I can't, I can't help but sort something. There is some colour coding going on inside the Trello board as well. So yeah, it's all nicely organised. So I want to start with some questions about Rebels and Rockstars itself. And we've had some amazing questions through. And we're going to start off then with one from the lovely Becky Coop. And she says, what were the biggest challenges you faced moving from corporate mode to work from home superstar? And how did you overcome them? Okay, so I brought quite a bit of corporate life into my business, I think, to start with. And, you know, I I was a lawyer, so I um, I worked with very old English and very proper language. And I think that the first biggest hurdle was actually working out how, how I speak, how I talk, um, rather than immediately going into um, words and phrases and standardization that, you know, I'd learned over the years as a lawyer and, you know, standard paragraphs and standard wording and how, you know, I opened and closed things. And I think that the biggest one initially was as getting that voice. And we've all got a voice because it's the thing that comes out here. And sometimes it gets stuck between here and here. And I think that a lot of what I did initially to really hone my voice was to talk and to voice record. And I did an awful lot of voice recording to pick up the words and the phrases and everything that I used on a day-to-day -day basis. So it was finding my voice was the biggest one. I brought over some great um, stuff that I learned in corporate world. So things like... Um, managing expectations that was a really big one as a lawyer as you can imagine was the management of expectations of your clients because what you can do is you can go out there and you can tell them that the moon is made of cheese 
Um, but I was never, ever prepared to do that in my corporate life. And also, I don't do that now. So managing expectations, letting people know the reality of situations, not blowing smoke up at people's bottoms. And, you know, knowing that there's an awful lot that can be done by actually seeing the real life situation that you're in. Another one that I probably brought over from corporate world, well, I definitely brought it over from corporate world, was the concept of cave time. And I called it, but I was taught it as prime time in the corporate world. I was taught it by a lovely lady who um, went on to move to New York and work at the UN. And she used to do prime time as her um, set you know, she had a couple of hours each week that she crossed out of a diary, phone got diverted to secretaries, door was closed, nobody went in, and that was dedicated to work time. And I do that as um, certain days or half days of every week that allow me to really focus in a dedicated way on the work that I do. Um, I obviously worked uh, as a lawyer, I worked um, as part of a team, but I also worked very independently. I was um, you know, often I was in offices on my own until the, the trendy open plan working came in. Mm -hmm. um, so I was used to self-motivating. I was used to having targets to work towards. Um, what I missed massively was an IT department and a secretary. Because yeah. <laughs> I always had um, an IT department to go, yeah, this doesn't work, sort it out. And yeah. I also had a secretary to say, well, can you just speak to them? <laughs> Can you sort that out? Can you, you can, and um, yeah. So I think that it was, it was a process. It didn't just happen like that. And yeah. it's about working out what worked for me and how I could best um, use the skills that I had, but bring them into a different environment. What's That's lovely about that. Yeah, it does. And what's lovely is those two things that you've mentioned, the two main ones there, are things that you've passed on to me through our time working together. So, you know, finding your voice within business was definitely something I struggled with. I, I came in very corporate, didn't I, when I first sort of popped on the scene. And then the cave time thing, you passed that on to me, and I adore that. I think it's absolutely brilliant. So, you know, those two challenges are actually two brilliant principles that you've passed on to me and other business owners too. So I love that. That's great. So we have uh, another question here now from Trudy, and she asks, how did Rebels and Rockstars come to be? Now, you've had quite a few different stages in your business, different names over the time. We've had the Launch Queen, we've had Coaching Rockstars, we've had Rebels and Rockstars. I don't know whether you want to tell us a little bit about how the whole thing started right at the beginning and then the kind of vision behind Rebels and Rockstars now. Okay, so um, the Launch Queen was my initial brand, <coughs> excuse me, that I worked with um, to help entrepreneurs to um, launch, to sell, to get themselves out there, to um, really kind of go from where they were with a with a, a knowledge, with a skill, with something, and be able to create an income out of that and. Um, what happened with the Launch Queen is I felt really boxed in. I felt like I could only ever talk about stuff that was attached to launching. I felt like there was so much that went into this launching thing that I, I, I felt really restricted that I ended up having to talk about the launch process rather than everything that goes behind it because a launch is not just a period of time where you go out and sell something. A launch is a much greater um, you know, build up of work. And it's the, you know, it's kind of the pinnacle of the work that you've done for months and months and months coming up to that. So I felt really boxed in by the launch queen. And Coaching Rockstars came about because I just wanted to put much more of my personality into stuff. I wanted to be able to talk about lots of stuff. I wanted to be able to do the whole journey rather than just this little bit at the end. And um, I wanted it to be more vibrant, more exciting, more, more, more. And um, that's when Coaching Rockstars came about. And Coaching Rockstars was an amazing brand. And I absolutely um, loved it. But there was something that was just not quite right. And the thing that was not quite right was the word coaching. And there is so often loads and loads and loads of discussions about what is a coach? Are you a coach? Can you be a coach if you're not qualified? 
coaching's a key, coaching's this, coaching's that, coaching's the other. And it just really didn't resonate with me. And it was, I know that as soon as something is buffering for me, as soon as there is something that is holding me back, then I need to examine it and I need to look at it and I need to make a decision as to whether or not there needs to be a change. And the word coaching was something that I didn't particularly um, resonate with. It wasn't something that I use. You know, I didn't refer to myself as a coach. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was that word that was causing me a little bit of angst. And I had a number of discussions with you with uh, my gorgeous web designer, um, Naomi Gilmore, with um, my gorgeous branding lady, um, Vicky Nicholson. And we decided that actually I did need to change it. And that's where Rebels and Rockstars was born because I help and support people who are um, a little bit different. Oh, I'm just talking about Vicky and she's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I support people who don't um, really work with traditional business advice they find business advice from its traditional sense quite hard quite icky um and i want to bridge that gap between them having that beautiful skill knowledge something to share with the world product whatever it might be to actually being able to make it work in a way that works for them and i'm going to just pop in um the link to the blog that i wrote about the change so if I was just about to say that, actually, because you've got two great blogs. You've got the one with the, your photographs from the evolution of your branding. That was a yeah. really good one as well. Um, and also, you did write one recently when you changed over to Rebels and Rockstars, and that's a fascinating read. And especially if people are thinking to themselves, I'm a little bit stuck or, you know, something's making me feel a bit icky about where my business is right now, then, you know, it's a great bit of inspiration to kind of get the cogs whirring, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll share the evolution one because I do have that on my list to um, update because it was done before the rebrand. Um, so the, the brand evolution was done before this recent rebrand. So I'm going to update that blog and I will share that again over the summer. Exciting. Very good. Lovely. Thank you very much. So now we've got some great questions from Alison Christie. Are you ready for these? Now, we've got quite a lot from Alison. <laughs> Is that your Wallace and Gromit face? <laughs> So first one then is, what's the thing you least like doing in your biz? Accounts. Accounts. Dead easy. You didn't even have to think about that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. It, right. Accounts are like a smear, right? I build them up as being such the most horrendous, horrible thing in the world. Then you get it done and think, ah, oh, that was all right. Yeah. Wasn't pleasant. Wasn't comfortable. But it was all right. Yeah. It's never as bad um, as you think, is it? No, and I also put out half a day a month to do my accounts, which includes a trip to Costa straight afterwards. So Perfect. I have a toddler and I do reward myself um, for work that I don't want to do because I've got to do a certain element of it to pass it over then to my accountant. So yeah. I do that element, I pass it over to my accountant and I do it every month so it doesn't become a big deal. And I know last month I um, kind of, I didn't do it on the first of the month for some reason. I don't know what was going on on the first working day of the month, but I didn't do it. And it was just getting on my nerves. And the 10th of the month, my accountant sent me a message. He went, mm, you haven't done your accounts. Um, we need to do your VAT return. And I, I was like, mm -hmm. so <laughs> it took me an hour with a decent YouTube playlist of music. Yeah. And it was done. So, you know, yeah. what's the deal? Get on and do it. Get on and do it, Holmesy. Yeah. That's it. Well, this might lead on to the next question, actually, or it may not. But uh, Alison's also asked, what did you outsource first? A newsletter. Oh, right, really? At the very beginning, I found a MailChimp hideously horrendous. You know what MailChimp used to be like. You oh, know, MailChimp horrible. is fairly easy to use now in comparison to what it was. So the first ever thing I outsourced was the creation of a monthly newsletter. Um, and I outsourced one hour a month. For that to be done and um, that was before I was paying myself that but that was the very first thing I outsourced. Excellent, like it. I'm surprised actually I didn't expect it to be the newsletter I thought it would be the accounts. Well my accounts I do do most of my accounts myself and my accountant then takes charge of um, annual tax returns and VAT and all of the more complicated stuff that you can get into trouble for. 
Yeah, that's it. So, we don't want the responsibility. Yeah, from the very beginning, I have had my accountant submit my accounts at the end of the year, yeah. but she wasn't involved till the end of the year. Now is involved on an ongoing basis because we have to do yeah. quarterly returns. Of course, yes. So one more question from Alison then is, what's the one thing you'd gladly stop doing today in your biz if it wasn't necessary? Other than accounts. Other than accounts. We've already had accounts. Think of something else. <laughs> um, I don't think I'd stop doing anything else. That's great. I, yeah. I'll tell you what I would stop doing. I would get you to come around here and sort out the whole of that summit that's taken me the last three days of my life. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's been gonna, quite long, isn't it? But I, you know, it's one of those jobs that I need to know is working properly. Yeah. And I'm not saying that you wouldn't make it work properly, but it's massively no. time intensive. Yeah. And, you know, it's one that I have kept hold of because it's, we've only done it annually. Yeah. You know, I had this this stupid idea last night as I was going to sleep that we might do one at Christmas. So if we do <laughs> do one at Christmas, you're taking that off me. <laughs> we'll have a chat about that one later, shall we? <laughs> you don't want it, do you? <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. I've heard you whinging for three days. Now you want to do it at Christmas. <laughs> So, final question we've got for this section, which is about rebels and rock stars, is um, another one from Alison Christie, actually. And she would um, just love to know who are your biz idols? Great question, isn't it? Um, I don't watch anybody. From Certainly from a social media perspective, mm -hmm. from um, the perspective of uh, watching what other people are doing within their business. I don't watch a single soul um, because I think that that is uh, not good for you. I think that it's, you know, it then puts you into that competition kind of place. You then become inspired without realising you're inspired. Um, and so I don't watch anybody from that perspective. Mm. I love reading books from Danielle Laporte, Gabrielle Bernstein, um, who else? Rebecca Campbell, um, Seth Gordon, Lisa Lister. So my idols are more from a book perspective than a watching them anywhere else um, because I, I don't think that that's healthy. Um, but they're the books that I like to read. Fantastic. Good. And I think that's right. That as you evolve in your business, you be you become less and less interested what others are doing. It was great at the start and you become very obsessed, don't you? And you kind of have to make sure that you've caught the latest post or otherwise the world's going to end. And I think it's nice when eventually you can step back and you feel that's not necessary for me anymore. And that's a great place to be. You know, I do read people's blogs. I do get information from people. I do get advice and support from people. Um, so, you know, don't think that I'm, I'm being sat here quite arrogantly saying that I am my own chip. Um, yeah. But I find that, you know, you, you you can end up in that unhealthy place. And I remember having a conversation with somebody um, where they. Oh, a little freeze. Mm. Oh, I'm frozen on this end.
Are you back? You're back. Hello. I've been talking to myself. Oh, darling, that's. I'm sorry. I disappeared. Can... <laughs> Can everybody hear us now? Okay. I was just about to sing. I was just about to do elevator music to pass the time there. So you best not sing. No, we'd lose everyone. Mm. <laughs> what was I talking about? We were talking about biz idols, weren't we? Oh yeah. So I was. <laughs> Here I go again. All right, I'm back. Here go again. So I was talking about the fact that I did have a conversation with somebody and that they said to me, who would you like to be like? And I said, you know what? I'm pretty cool being myself. So I don't look at um, other business owners in a way where I would go, oh, wouldn't it be nice to be like them? <laughs> because you know what? I'm all right. Yeah, absolutely. Good answer. I like that one. So now we've got you back, we're going to get a bit more personal now. So I've created a category of personal. One second. Yeah. I'm just going to cover a couple of questions in this feed. Oh, yes. We'll lose them. Um, 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 let's just see. Do I miss being a lawyer? I would have missed being a lawyer if being a lawyer was the same when I finished as it was when I started. But I'm not going to get political about it, but there were stacks and stacks of funding cuts, legal aid cuts, and it ended up being a job that didn't um, fill the criteria that it had done initially, and that was to help and support people who were in mm -hmm. positions and places that were a bit It ended up being a job that didn't... Okay, you've, got, you've, got that it had done. you've got me replaying? It just came up. Sorry about that. I was trying to check the questions. Are you all right? Sorry, yeah, that's just too gone now. My fault. My fault. <laughs> I wonder about the scarves. Do you feel the safety net? Not at all. Not at all. I wear scarves because I like wearing scarves. I wear scarves out and about in real life. I don't wear them to cover my scar. Um, I know I've been asked that one before. I just like wearing a scarf and um, it's just kind of my thing. And I feel a little bit undressed without it. So there's a completely different look there, isn't there? There is. So I don't use it in any way other than I think that they're pretty and they're my thing. And, <laughs> you know, I sit in front of a camera all day usually and in front of a desk all day. So you only see this bit of me. So there's no point in me buying nice shoes. I might as well buy a nice <laughs> Exactly. So there we are. That's them done, I think. Excellent. So let's have a little bit look at uh, something a bit more personal then. So we've had plenty of questions from people wanting to know more about you. So are you ready for this one? Yeah. Let's have a look. So we had a few questions actually asking, including from um, Vicky, Becky, Kerry, all asking what you do in your spare time. So what are your hobbies? What do you love to do? What do you do to relax and unwind? Okay, well, I like to read. Um, my guilty pleasure is um, Formula One motor racing. Um, <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I love an F1 weekend. Um, <laughs> and there's one this weekend. So you won't see me doing that. Um, <laughs> I like to walk the dog. I like to ride my bike. I like to swim. Um, I like to watch, um, I don't watch that much telly, but if I, you know, I do, I'm not, uh, I'm not um, objecting to a bit of a, a Netflix binge. We started something called Sense8 last night. Have you watched that? Oh, yes, I like Sense8. It's very good. It's a bit trippy. I'm checking on with because I'm a little bit like, I'm not really sure what's going on right now. No, it's good. It's worth it. Yeah, keep going. Okay, so we've started Sense8. Um I enjoy going out for food, I enjoy going to the movies, we do family stuff, we do kids stuff. Yesterday you found me flying down um, water slides at the swimming baths because I was fun mum yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do regular kind of stuff. Excellent. Good stuff. We just had a question up there that's popped up saying, have you seen Stranger Things yet? If you've been doing your Netflix box set binges, that's a good one too. I like OA. I, oh, yeah. I loved Peaky Blinders. Yes. Uh, I'm really, really pissed off with The Walking Dead now because that's just getting silly. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like I've invested so much of my life in it. <laughs> yes. So I, yeah. I'm a 
upset with that. Um, Jonathan's read the comics and they're not the same as the comics. No, no, I think they've gone off on their own tangent now, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. It feels like they're pulling it out. Yeah, absolutely. Intruders just said they'd be watching Open Black. I saw that on Netflix last night and I was, jo uh, it's not Johnny's cup of tea, so it'll be one that I do when he's out. Excellent. It's good. So we've got a question from Trudy, actually. Um, now, apparently, I need to ask you this. So I think you must understand some something underlying in the question. What's on your 100 fun things to do? <laughs> I asked it, Trudy. <laughs> we were talking about, let's have a look. Have we got one in here? <clears throat> no, we haven't. Um, the Leone uh, workbooks and the fact that you have to write out 100 things that you want to do. Yes. And I find them things just a bit meh. And it's yeah. I've never managed to complete 100 things that I want to do. And I'm a little bit more of a spontaneous beast. Certainly before I had kids, you know, we would be the ones that Johnny would get home from work and I'd be like, right, we're going away this weekend. All right, we're doing this. And right, we're doing that. And, yeah. you know, we would we would go out for the day and end up staying overnight because it was just like, you know. So I'm a little bit more spontaneous than that. And I know that I've got to be more planned now that I'm a parent and, you know, kids need all the things bringing with them and everything needs sorting out. And we've now got a dog. But, yeah, I don't have a 100 things to do because I am quite spontaneous. And it's one of those that it's like, right, okay, so what am I going to do today? What do I fancy doing? What do I want to do? Um, and... Yeah, I, I don't have a list. Cool, good stuff. And I've just seen a question pop up there from Vicky actually about productivity. And I do have a productivity category that we're coming on to, Vicky. So we will be moving on to that in a little bit. Um, so another question then about the more personal side then is uh, from Samantha Vallon. She says, she's interested in your self-care and how you keep yourself and everyone else around you inspired. Hmm. <laughs> That's a biggie, isn't it? I think that the big ones is to make sure that you are eating and drinking properly. And, you know, these, what we do is as entrepreneurs, we forget the really bloody basic needs of life because we sit here like this and I've got to keep working, I've got to keep working, I've got to keep working. You know, stop, eat, drink, make sure you're looking after yourself, take some exercise, get some fresh air. We live right opposite a park and I, you know, even if it is like two minutes around the park or even if I'm going over the park, take my shoes off, grounding myself, you know, a lot of it comes to that. Um, and it's, yeah, it's about making sure that there's time for you in the day. And that, you know, you look after your basic needs, that you do things that light you up, that you do things that are fun because all work and no play makes everybody very nick. So, yeah, you know, occasionally I'll have a spa day. Yeah, occasionally I'll have, you know, uh, a bubble bath that is without children or a dog trying to jump into it. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a, kind, it's a mixed bag. I don't have, other than the basic self-care of making sure, you know, I've got a reminder on my phone that says it's lunchtime. Yeah. Because I was crap at it. I've got a bottle that I use that's got two litres of water in it and a and a sippy cup on my desk because then I will drink two litres of water in the day. So it's about looking after the basic needs, then mixing it up on the other stuff, I think. Yeah. Sounds good. Excellent. And we've got another one from um, Kerry and Becky, who both want to know a bit more about your hopes and dreams. And Becky has actually got on to say that she wants to know because she's playing nosy, but also because she's sure that it's totally inspiring. So no pressure, Emma. <laughs> well, I think the, the, pro the progression of, of my work and the work that I'm doing is about being able to help and inspire more entrepreneurs. It's about being able to um take people from the places of being stuck and of not really understanding how to share their message with the world and to really connect with that. Um, the big one that came through for me yesterday was about um, helping people who've stagnated a little bit because that's so common is that when you get your business together and you get moving forwards, it's really easy to then stagnate. And, um, you know, I'm going to be doing quite a lot of work coming up on, on stagnating, on how to keep moving forwards. But for me, it's all about me being able to reach more people. It's about being able to help and support more people. 
people, but being able to truly help and support them so that, you know, I have um, that ability to take things to the next level. And the next level is more people. And that, you know, that's my miss my mission is to be able to serve more people. And but not just, you know, it's not just a numbers game and it's not just about walking purses. It's about really and truly connecting and helping people and making um bridging that gap between the knowledge and the power and the information and the product and everything that they've got and being able to turn their light on and let them shine. Brilliant. Love that answer. So that's the end of that section. I don't know whether you want to check if there's any more questions now. We're getting through them. We're doing all right. <laughs> Gemma says, do I have a coach? I have um, a few people that are, um, you know, team ELH. I know I've got team rock stars that um, help and support me to do my work, but I've also got a team ELH that uh, do input into the business um, and help and support me with where I'm going in direction and, and what I'm doing. And, um, yeah. Natalie says, uh, how do you appear to be on Facebook so much and not let it suck the life out of your day? Well, I, it's prime time. It's cave time. It's making sure that you know, if I'm doing stuff that I can just, you know, crack on and do, then um, I can have Facebook open. I can have social media open. If there's stuff that needs massive concentration, then I don't have it all. Sometimes I appear to be on, and I'm not. <laughs> because I schedule stuff in advance. I do other things. Sarah might come on and answer some comments every now and again if they're things that, you know, if I'm not around for some reason, like when I go on holiday. So whilst it appears I'm always here, <laughs> and sometimes I'm just on my phone and it's like the advert breaking a show and I'm doing a bit of replying and the queue in the supermarkets. Yeah, I don't see it as work, you know, it, it's just um being able to reply to people and being able to you know, I would much rather deal with things and help people and support people and move them forward than go and, you know, leave them to be stuck mm -hmm. and it then, you know, becoming a thing in their world because I know what it feels like to feel stuck. Yeah. And I know that when you are stuck, you want that help and support. You want to be able to move forwards and you want to be able to do it. Um, so it's it's about being able to, you know, balance out. And, you know, if I, if I can't be here, if I'm in the swimming pool for three hours, then I'm not. <laughs> when I come out, I'll, you know, when the kids are drying their hair and stuff, I'll check. I'll check in and see if there's anything that needs my attention. Excellent. So we've got some questions now on my favourite topic, productivity. So we've got quite a few, actually. And just before we move on to those questions, I just wanted to say that I work really closely with Emma and I see how much she is capable of achieving, how motivated she is and how much work she gets done. And it, you know, even from my point of view as a, as a productivity expert, I look and I'm completely astounded sometimes by how much you're capable of doing. So I'm really looking forward to the answer to these questions. <laughs> So even first of all, oh, say that again, sorry. Even though I'm working a bit of a mess. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, actually, you, you pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only a bit of a mess, isn't it? We, we don't have to sort of it's like go out the office and do a deep clean, so we're all right. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a couple of questions from the lovely Kathy Payne, who asks, first of all, how do you stay aligned, focused, and moving forward so consistently? So, I think that it's about knowing what you're doing and why you're doing it. It's about service. It's about the fact that it isn't just, um, this isn't about me. Mm. This isn't about me. This is about getting stuff done, because if it sits in my head, it doesn't help anybody else. So I think that when we look at focus and when we look at, at getting work, I'm not looking at this about me. I'm not looking at this as my workload. I'm not looking at it as an option. There isn't an option not to do it. Mm. It has to be done. And, you know, you when you're serving a mission, you have to serve that mission. And you have to crack on and get things done. I work with really realistic um, 
to-do lists. So yesterday was um, it was a fusion morning, so I had the kids around yesterday morning, um, and they were doing their own thing, and I was working a bit, and then we went swimming in the afternoon. And you know, my to-do list was exceeded massively because I'd been really realistic with my time because it's school holidays. But yeah. I've, I've not, I don't overthink things massively. I don't seek perfection. I I seek to share a message and I seek to get on and work with the next task and to help and support as many people as I can. Excellent. It's good. It works. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's sometimes just so hard to, to do that, isn't it? You know, it's, it's hard just to let us let ourselves go over the floor a little bit more. We have such high expectations naturally as business owners. And I think that's where one of our major problems starts, doesn't it? And I think another one actually brings us back onto Kathy's second question, which is um, how do you bust the blocks? And we all have them, don't we? We all have those blocks where we just kind of get totally stuck in the road. Mm -hmm. And I think that the thing is, is it's about, you know, what I do. And I did, I think I did a live on this last week is if something just is, I'm buffering up against it, start by writing it down. Mm. What is it? What is it right now that's stopping you? Write it down. Yeah. Explore what comes to you as you think about it. So, for example, when, when I was looking at the brands and when I was looking at, at Coachy and Rockstars, it's like this, I couldn't put my finger on it. There's just something not right about it. And it yeah. started with just, there's something not right about my brand written in the middle of a piece of paper. And then from there, loads of offshoots come off it. And anything that just feels like it's not quite right, feels like it's a blockage, feels like it's something in your way, I would really, you know, some people call it journaling. I think that journaling means that it has loads of fucking rules and I don't like rules. And <laughs> just write it down. Get yeah. it up. Write it down and explore what things come to you as you think about that particular thing. Because chances are you will find what it is. And I found in, you know, the example of the brand that it was the word coaching. And I always said that, you know, coaching most times was about me helping you, but it just didn't fit. And then I could then take that journey through my thought paths and the thought threads that were coming up as I sat down and thought about it. And, you know, it was it looked to anyone else like a, a page of mumbo jumbo, a page yeah. of one liners, bits and bobs and pieces. But actually, when you looked at it in its entirety, it gave a real good um, basis of what I needed to change. Excellent. That's great. It's a really good suggestion as well. And I think, you know, if it's something somebody hasn't tried before, give it a go the, first, the next time you come up against a block because it is surprising how much that releases, doesn't it? Just writing that first word down on paper makes a really big difference. You know, I sometimes start with, I have got no idea why I'm writing this down. Yeah, I've done things like that before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I can unpick it and I can start yeah. to look at what is behind it, what's going on, how can I take it forwards yeah it's just a, it's a mental trigger and that's all you need isn't it to to kind of open that doorway so you can focus and get there excellent so we've got another question for the the final question in this productivity section actually and this is another one from trudy and apparently um she's going to be able to visualize you cringing at this question she said how many hours a work a week do you work <laughs> trudy <laughs> I'm, I'm getting you back on, Cor, and I'm going to interview you again on Rockstar TV. So, in a general week, let's go with a general week. Kids are at school. Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, I start working at 8 o'clock because the kids go into breakfast club. Every night except a Monday, I finish at 3 o'clock because I do the school run every night. Um, on, a, on a Monday, I work till 6 because the kids got grandmas. I work a Wednesday night because Johnny goes out, so I'll be working tonight after the skate park. And then I pick up little bits and pieces on my phone in ad breaks. So actually, the reality is <laughs> that I don't work all of the time. I'm not a slave to my laptop. Um, you know, the, the stuff that I do on other evenings is stuff that I'm doing because I want to rather than because I have to. The bulk of my work is done between... Um, 8 or 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. 
Excellent. Good answer. I like that. Very good. But I think it's amazing, you're working all the time because you're always thinking, there's always like, inspiration everywhere, there's always ideas everywhere. So, you know, I can go absolutely anywhere in the world and, you know, that be inspired whether I'm, you know, going the tip with the rubbish or whether yeah. I'm laid on a lovely beach, you know, things can, can come and bite my bum and inspire me wherever I am. Yeah, you know, I've just seen Trudy's comment there saying that you can type really fast. I think what actually it is, is you can do everything very fast. In my opinion, from what I witnessed, everything seems to just be much faster than everybody else's pace. And it works, doesn't it? And you write oh, the different types of work that you do. Some of it is real work on your business. And some of it is just getting inspired, doing a bit of Googling. You know, you can do that while you're sat chilling out and it's it's not full on work. It, the important part is how much full on work you do per week and the fact that that is broken up to to help you cope with um, sort of the intensity of it, really, isn't it? And that works. Yeah. Fabulous. So have we got any more questions there, or would you like me to move on to our next section? I don't think there's any sat in the timeline, so you can crack on. Excellent. Right, so I've called this section um, <laughs> Business oh. Wisdom and Insights. Wow, I was getting really creative here, wasn't I? It's colour-coded purple. I don't know whether that helps anybody at all, no? no? You think it's <laughs> black, don't you? <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> Give her a bit of power and look what happens. I know, look at this. I'm loving this. Who else wants to do it? No, I'm only joking. <laughs> so, another one from Trudy. I'm sure this isn't as bad as the others. Um, would you like to, oh, she would like to know what is your biggest lesson in business so far? Good question. Simple but significant. Yeah. Keep it bloody simple. Stop overcomplicating everything. And this came, um, and I originally called it a princess principle because oh, yes. it originally came when I was absolutely struggling with a bit of tech. And I'd sat there for hours and I'd made up the most convoluted, complicated possible solution. I then went to the help desk and went, you know, eventually, this was like, you know, a couple of days down the line, I went, I'm trying to do this, how to do it? And the, you know, the response um, was for a, from a lady called Princess and it made me completely face palm because I was totally missing the simple way forwards because I was trying to make it complicated. And our human brains naturally try and make things complicated. And we think that, you know, we're, we're brought up, I think, most of us to say that if it's going to be worth it, it's going to be hard. But actually, it doesn't need to be. Keep yeah. everything simple but significant. I love that. Absolutely love that. In fact, I'm going to make that make a note of that later and just have that sort of visible because I think that's a really good thing to remember. Definitely. Right. We've got another one from Becky here. And she would like to know about the challenges you overcame in the early days of Rebels and Rockstars. So I think that we all do the same things. All of us. You know, I'm just a little bit further ahead than you and I can help navigate the way for you. Um, you know, we... I had times where I needed to make money. I had times where I questioned whether what I was doing was the right thing. I had times where I overanalyzed, I overthought things. I um, looked for, I looked for approval maybe at times. Um, and I think that we all go through that in the early days of business and it doesn't matter where, you know, where you are and what you're doing, you know, it takes a little bit of time to to start to trust your own judgment, to start to trust your own instinct, to start to trust your gut, to stop feeling like there needs to be. And I know that lots of people get this, that they need to have um, positive feedback to fill their own cup. Yeah. You don't. You just need to be getting on with what you do and how you do it. And I think that that probably... You know, as you look at, at the evolution of any business owner, they will question themselves. There mm. will be times where they need to make more money. There will be times where they go, is it worth it? There will be times where they utter the words, I am going to go and get a proper job. Life must be easier doing something else. <laughs> we will all go through those periods of time until you trust yourself. And I think that, you know, it doesn't matter who you are and at what stage you are. You will either have been through those or you'll be going through those. Yeah. Absolutely. Very true. And it's amazing. There's times where I've been through some of those stages and you think you're never going to get out of them. And you and you really do. But, you know, you do walk into a whole new set of issues and a new set of problems. But there, there are things that you've grown with and it does signify the growth of your business and the development of you as a business owner as well. 
So yeah, and great answer. What I say to you uh, is, you know, it's normal. Yeah. And I think that that's often the biggest relief yes. is that it's not just you. It, you know, you're not faulty. You're not the one that's getting it all wrong. You're not the one that's shit at this. Yeah. You know, that, that realisation that actually, you know, so many business owners go through that. Yeah. And that it is completely normal to go through that. And there is another side to that if you keep working and keep moving forwards. Yeah. Um, I think it's very comforting. Yeah, definitely. No, I love that. That's great. So we've got a fab question here from Lisa Parks, and she says, how do you draw a line between giving everything away and what is paid for? She said, I like your ethos of serve the pants off people, although I wonder if people see the value of what you do if you show up and give it all away. I'm sure that's my fears, but I would love to hear your view. The more I give away, the more I get in return. Yeah. In order to receive, you must give. The times where I've given the most have been the times where I've subsequently gone on and launched and made the most money and got the most people signed up to stuff. The more I've given, the more I've received. And I don't give to receive. Yeah. I give in order to help and support you. I don't give everything. You know, I'm, I, I don't give away um, one-to-one time. I don't give away a lot of... Um, bespoke advice for your business you know the things that you would get if you were within one of my programs you don't get immediate reactions from me um from a public perspective but you, you know there's an awful lot of that happens within my programs um but it, it allows people to see whether or not i'm the right person for them yeah. and if i am perfect if i'm not perfect yeah whichever way it goes and you know i think that the biggest one that i often use an example of this is in October 2015, I put out a really, really big freebie. And it was called How to Get Online in 10 Days. And yeah. it took you through every single step, tech steps, every step from get, having an idea in your head to launching it out there. And I spent time marketing that. I marketed it as if it was a product. I got messages from other people saying, why are you giving that away for free? You should be charging money for that. Um, yeah. But... You know, that really did allow me to lay really great foundations with my crowd to um, to move them forward with me. And, you know, I, I'll i continue to give away a lot because, you know, that allows me to help and support people who wouldn't necessarily be able to afford to work with me on a one-to-one -one basis. Yeah. And that's why I also bring together a product range that allows people to access me at whatever point because... I remember what it was like not to have very much money. I remember what it was like to invest in help and support before I was paying myself. I did, you know, I took those steps. And that's why you can get into my hub for 10 quid or you can work with me one-to-one -one for a significant amount more than that. Yeah, and both have their value and they have a place in every business owner depending on what part of their journey that they're in at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Love it. So another one here from um, Lisa Lancaster is she would like to know a bit more about how to market herself. She currently just uses Facebook and wonders what else to consider. She has used some um, local advertising in magazines, but it doesn't increase her footfall. So where else should, could she place her focus? OK, so I know that Lisa is a toy shop owner. I know that she needs to start to access her local mums. So is there a local mums forum in her area? Is there shoe start groups? Is there play groups? Is there um, preschool groups? You know, where can you get in front of local mums on maths? That's your first point of call. Your second point of call is, yeah, Facebook is fantastic. All right, look at um, targeting some of your posts to your local mums talking about coming into the shop, but also target some of those posts then at the whole world because you can sell online too. Remember that Facebook is a platform that isn't in your control. So don't put all of your eggs in that basket because whilst I absolutely love Facebook, I know that there's still masses and masses and masses of reach available for you if you choose. I think as I just saw this a second ago, let's have a look. Um, did you just drop your mic? No, I didn't. <laughs> It's not like I dropped it in water. <laughs> 1,300 people have watched this video yeah. that we're doing right 
now 1,300 people have already watched it. It's been served up by Facebook to over 4,000 people. So, you know, there is still the ability to get good reach, but you also need to be looking at, right, okay, so where else can you get in front of these people? Mm. And you start to bring together a little bit of a strategy for an Instagram account. But Instagram is a breeding ground of lots and lots of lots of visual um, gorgeousness. And mm. if you've got toys and things like that, that's a great place to be because you can do really great pictures of toys. So I think that if I was you and I was looking at where next, I would be looking at local mums groups. I would be looking at how you target your Facebook posts. I would be looking at Instagram. And I would be also looking at um, some collaborations of other people who are marketing to parents. Excellent. Great answer. So I hope that helps, Lisa. So we're moving on to the last section. We've almost done it. And this I've called Biz Tips because people are asking for your biz tips. Biz tips <laughs> I knew that was coming so we should have a banner and some music first one then is from Kathy Payne what are your top three tips for starting out in business um really capture your passion why are you doing this what is it all about and not you know like a, a dream board of what you want to buy and not you know really what's the mission to others without yeah. thinking about yourself in any way like what you want to buy, what, how much you want to earn, your freedom, your this, that, and the other, because they're byproducts and they're really good to think about. But think about who you're here to serve, what mission you've got, what your message is, why you are passionate about what you do, because that passion will get your ass out of bed. That passion will get you to show up. That passion will allow you to um, face any fear because that passion will be bigger. So, like when you said about how can you be really productive, because it's not about me, it's because it's, you know, it's a non-negotiable. And when yeah. you get that passion that is non-negotiable, you can deal with everything else. So that would be number one. Um, number two would be um, go and serve the plants of your crowd. Start by bringing a crowd of people together who are interested in what you do and serve the pants off those people because in the long term that will really 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 pay you dividends so whether that's opening a facebook page and serving people there whether that's opening an instagram account whether that's opening a twitter account whether if you really must open in a linkedin account um <laughs> but you know change the platform start to gather a crowd serve the pants off that crowd and number three is keep going because we all think that we talk about stuff too much. We all think that we've talked about it to death. We all think that people will be sick of hearing it. And most of the time, people haven't even started to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Because the world Great. Is busy. Love that. Absolutely love those. They're fantastic. And another one then. So both from both Kathy and um, Lisa, they have specific questions on being a heart-centered business owner. So first of all, from Kathy, she's put, what's the biggest mistake you see heart-centered business women making? Undervaluing themselves. Yeah, that's they really common, about, isn't it? They hate talking about cash. They shy away from talking about selling anything. Um, they put price tags on stuff because they've already psychically decided how much their clients are willing are and aren't willing to pay for things and even if you're not psychic that's your ego it's not yeah. it's not your connection with spirit so that you know that's one of the biggest ones and i will be sell i will be sharing um in the summit that starts next week um uh, my heart-centered selling for the scared masterclass, and i think that's in week two and in week one i'll be sharing um the why you're not making money in your business right now and what you can do about it so they will be available in the coming weeks perfect and finally then, the last one from Lisa is, what are the biggest struggles and challenges that being a heart-centered business entrepreneur and mum has to go through? And how can you sort of advise um, being able to wear so many hats and keeping it going? Um, the thing is, is, I suppose that, you know, I, I am a business owner and I am a mum and sometimes those fuse. And I talk about this um, when I've talked about school holidays. So some mm. of it's and it's the fact that, you know, my kids are in the house right now. 
They know that mummy's on a call for an hour. Grandma's yeah. here for if they want anything. But they're in the house right now and they know that I need to crack on. Um, yesterday, I, I sat in the kitchen and did a bit of work while they came and went. And, you know, they're older now. It's easier now because they do amuse themselves a lot more. I do sit at places like I'll be sat at the skate park tonight. So, you know, I'll be listening to a couple podcasts, taking some notes um, at the skate park later on. I think that um, it always has to be back to you know, aligning with your mission. And I, I've released two of three um, lessons I've learned so far in life blogs. And um, I talk about the fact that, you know, when, when you're a mum, you are not always in control of everything. Not everybody listens to you. Um, but that, you know, you've got to be able to manage as best you can you know my kids sometimes come out of school and go oh why can't we go after a school club like everybody else it's not fair that you want to pick us up yeah well you know you might you might actually appreciate that in years to come and <laughs> you know, I know that i'm here and I, but i'm not always with them 100 percent of the time but lots of mums are out at work right now mm. lots of mums are you know working from nine till five and i would have been that person so it, it's you know let yourself off the hook a little bit with the guilt and yeah. look at realistically and look at it you know from what's best for everyone because i think that the biggest thing that you'll get into as as a heart-centered business owner who is also a mum is is the guilt trap that you know every you know i'm doing everything badly well sometimes there's work time and if you had a proper job which you have anyway but you know if you want to call going out to work for somebody else a proper job um you you would go out and work you would leave the kids you'd have to find childcare. you'd have to do what you had to do so make sure you've got work time. Make sure you've got time with the kids where you're not attached to something else where they've got your attention, where you can have fun. And then fusion time is when you can add both in and, you know, there's a balance to be struck across the three. I don't always get it right. You won't yeah. always get it right because, because that's life. Yeah. And seeing how you can best work for you and for your family. Excellent. So we've got to the end of all the questions. So I was just going to add one in myself, actually. If that's all right. Don't pull yeah. that face. <laughs> no, I just really wanted to know if there's anything you can kind of share with us about what we can expect from you coming up soon in your business and the future. I know you did briefly mention the summit there, which is very exciting. And anything else you can tell us a bit about? So the summit starts next week. That's Thursday before. Masterclasses um, from rock stars, and uh, we'll be going week by week. There'll be different classes each week that are available to to you to sign up to. I don't even know if that sense made sense. Sorry. <laughs> um, so that's coming next. Um, I'm also going to be upgrading and um, relaunching Supernova, which is um, probably my. Would, would you class it as my flagship program? <laughs> Yeah, which absolutely program, and that will be um, re-released really, really soon. Um, then we've got uh, what else? We've got we've got another book that's in editing. We've got um, the not a fucking planner book <laughs> um, being worked on right now, and I'm going to be arranging to uh, travel up to Scotland, spend some time with Vicky to bring the final version of that together once the kids go back to school in September and there is my Beyond Ordinary Business Hub um, that I love, love, love and um, the other thing is I'm going to be doing uh, something very exciting about stagnating in business so watch that this space with that. Very exciting stuff. Well I've loved this, this has been amazing, we've had some amazing questions haven't we? Yeah, does anybody else who's watching now live want to ask us anything? Don't be shy, you didn't have to have it in before. We've covered all those that was in before. I can't even talk now. We no, no. <laughs> I might need to lie down after this. <laughs> Does anybody want to ask us anything else? Anything at all? <clears throat> you can do your singing now. Oh, I'm embarrassed now because you're watching me. You've oh, gone yeah. before. <laughs> any more for any more i keep getting repeat numbers you know as i look at this now we've got 66 comments wow 
I went out at one eleven yesterday. I got eleven eleven when I started something on my Facebook page yesterday. It was um, I had one hundred and eleven reach on something. I had eleven people watching something, getting lots of repeat numbers. We've now got twenty two viewers. <gasps> Oh, this is getting a bit spooky. We need somebody to interpret all of that for us, don't we? See what's going on. <laughs> any more for any more before we um, go and have some lunch? Because that's really important as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Look after your basics. Oh, something's coming. How do I join up, says Sarah. What are you looking to join up with, my darling? 22 live viewers, Natalie says. If you want to be part of the Beyond Ordinary Business Hub, then you will find that over on the website. I will pull a link over. Um, do, do, do want some help? And then the gorgeous supernova will be set in sale really soon. I'm just doing some tweaks to it and to make it even better. Even better than it already is, Emma? Better than it already is. Wow, is that even possible? There's the hub link if anybody wants to get involved with the hub. Um, Judy says, one, 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 keep your thoughts positive. Anything that you think you can manifest. Vicky says, thanks for today. Thank you for joining us, Fix. Thank you. Uh, Judy says, look up Joanne Sacred Scribes on Google and find out the, what the repeated numbers mean. Oh, we'll be checking that out. Yeah. Oh, won't you? you sort yeah. that out. I'll do. Got it written down. Thank you. Sorry says thank you both. Love seeing you interact. My absolute pleasure. Oh, Maureen's watching in the car. I hope you're not driving more. You better not be driving. Um a sneaky brick just stretched and accidentally been born. <laughs> next to me trying to see you. Hello, my man. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, um, been fab thanks ladies my absolute pleasure thank you sarah thank, thank you, you for agreeing to it because i i made you agree to it without you really agreeing to it. and then i've embraced it i've been practicing my interview voice be warming up the throat and everything yeah it'd be lovely <laughs> Sarah says she's loved this thank you sarah says thanks our absolute pleasure well Thank you so much for taking the time, Sarah, and being a lovely host and keeping the questions away from me so that I didn't edit <laughs> or um, really plan answers. Because I, thought, I think that it's really important that you get what comes. Yeah. And it would be very stilted and stale if I'd sat and looked at answers and pre-planned them and prepared them. So that is absolutely amazing of you for, for doing that. And I hope everybody has enjoyed today's Rockstar TV. Yeah, we're done. We're done. Yay, we did it. <laughs> so I will, um, obviously, if you watch the replay, come in and put any questions that you want in and I will um, respond to them. We'll also be putting the recording up over on YouTube and also I will be um, pulling out the audio so that it is available as a podcast if you want to listen to it again on the go. So thank you so much for your time, Sarah. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and interacting with us and making it a lovely hour and a bit. And I hope you all have an absolutely blessed rest of your Wednesday and I'll speak to you all really soon. Thanks, Sarah. Bye. <laughs>